All right, leaders, we've got a juicy episode today. Welcome back to the show. I recently put a post up on Instagram and it was saved like hot cakes. This post was saved like crazy. So I wanted to bring it to your attention and chat about it. Now the hook on this particular post, it was a carousel. The kind of, um, the theme of it was what I would do if I was trying to hit my first 5k, 20k, 50k, and then 100k month. So if you listen to this episode, there's a pretty good, or listen to this podcast, there's a pretty good chance that you're a business owner, you're an entrepreneur, you're a digital marketer, you're an online coach, and likely you are looking to grow and scale your business, right? And what does that mean? We want to make more impact, of course, we want to help people, but at the end of the day, we want to make more income and there's nothing you should feel bad about that. Like we should not be pretending that we don't want to make more money. I am unapologetic about the money that I want to create, the wealth that I want to create. And I have been from day one, because as one of my dear friends, Chris Harder has always said, when good people make good money, they do great things. And I'm proof of that. I am. We we do incredible things with our money and it is it has given us the opportunity and ability to do things that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to do. So that said, let's like break this whole thing down. If you're shooting for your first 5k month, now this would be like, same thing would go for your first 1k, 2k, maybe even like 7k or 8k month. But the idea here is you're more in the beginning stages of your business and you're looking to consistently be hitting these numbers. So it's not just like, cool, you launched something a thousand dollar offer for a one-on-one -on -one client and you sold five of them and like you did it, you did a 5k month. That's awesome. And you could totally do that. But what I'm talking about here is more of a like repeatable system and the action steps that you would need to take to consistently hit that, you know, 3k, 5k, 7k type of month. So the first thing is you might not like this, but y'all, you need to show up every day, every day. Every day. Now, of course you can take a break. Uh, like if you need a detox or a Sunday off, right? I'm not saying you have to be married to Instagram. I'm not saying you have to be married to your phone, but the reality of it is if you are a business owner who is not showing up every day, then what you're doing is essentially the same thing as having a brick and mortar store in the center of town and painting your windows black and keeping your front door locked with a closed sign on it. Like that's literally what you're doing when you're not showing up on social media, especially as a digital based business. If you have a brick and mortar and you're using social media to help with marketing, that's not as crucial. It still is, but it's a little bit different because you have foot traffic, you have people coming in. If you're selling a physical product and you're not utilizing social media every day, you also are really missing out. There is an element of kind of earning your right. And I don't mean earn as in like you deserve and someone is more worthy than you, but it's like you need to earn your right to be able to take the break, to take the vacation, to take the week off social media. And most people before the 5K month consistency, they're not there yet. Like you haven't at that point in business, you likely haven't earned the recognition. You don't have the brand recognition. You don't have the consistency in your content. You don't, you don't even have really great market research because you're not being consistent. You likely don't have the clout or credibility. You likely don't have the trust from your audience. You might not even have an audience yet. And your audience members might not actually be community. Audience and community are two different things. Audience is people that want to look and follow you. Community is people feel connected to other people in the audience. So now they're connected to each other. So showing up every day, honestly, for me, it's a non-negotiable. When you're at the beginning stages of business, if you're looking to hit those, you know, 5K months, you need to be showing up every day. Back in the day, people would spend tens of thousands of dollars to put ads in newspapers and magazines and hundreds of thousands of dollars to have TV commercials. I'm a Jersey girl. People in Jersey, we have a lot of diners and the diners have paper placemats and hair salons and like local, you know, farmers, um, nurseries where you buy plants and stuff like they would literally take ads out on the paper placemats. They still do it today. The beautiful thing about social media, first of all, is there are so many platforms to choose from. So whatever type of content you want to create, whatever, wherever your ideal client is hanging out, that's where you should be. But uh, when I'm recording this episode, we've got, we've got Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, Pinterest, um, LinkedIn. We've got Twitter threads, Facebook, there's probably more clubhouse is still around. So there's tons of opportunity for you for free from the comfort of your home with the push of a thumb to put content out to help people and hopefully convert them into community members that are then loyal buyers. So showing up every day, non-negotiable. 
Now, when you are showing up, the second thing that you want to be doing is making sure that you are so clear, like crystal clear on who it is that you help. What the heck you do? What is the problem that you solve? How do you solve it for people? This is the idea of going niche or niche. Now, I know a lot of people don't like that. We've all been told that for so long, niche, blah, 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 blah riches and niches. You have to niche down and people are very uh, resistant to it, right? Because I want to help everybody because what I do helps so many people because what I do gives so many different transformations. And while that's fine and I understand it, this again is where we earn our right to go wide. So I always use the example when Starbucks started selling things, they sold coffee. That was it. They just sold coffee. And then over the years, now they sell cake pops and sandwiches and bagels and tea and all sorts of stuff. When Nike started, they sold sneakers, period, end of story. That's all they sold. And then they eventually started selling jumpsuits and clothing and basketballs and now, you know, luggage and all sorts of things. I can keep going with examples like this, but companies earn their right to go wide over time. And the word earn, again, is not deserving. It's earn as in you've earned the trust of your community. You've earned the market research to understand what they want next. You've earned the loyal buyer to increase your LTV, your lifetime customer value. So really getting clear on what it is that you do and who you help and just get more niche, like go even more niche, but more specific on, on what it is you're doing. The other thing that I would do if you're looking to hit that first, you know, consistent 5k month is sell one signature offer. Now I know there's a lot of ways to run businesses. There are people who have low ticket, high ticket, there's evergreen, there's passive, there's live, there's launching, there's not launching, there's sales calls, there's applications, there's none of the above, there's uh, running a, a live program. There is, you know, you could do one-to-one, -one, you could do one-to-many, you can do um, memberships. Like, my goodness, there are so many different ways to run a business. I'm not telling you which thing you have to pick. I'm just saying pick one and stick with it. Pick it and stick it. What you want to do is you want to build out one signature offer and refine that signature offer and make it bulletproof, like make it to the point where it's working. It's working on repeat. It's working multiple times. It's working for lots of different people. You're getting a lot of market research from your clients that are in it. You're getting feedback. You're making tweaks. You're making the program better and they're getting results, right? Because when they get results, then they're going to give you word of mouth and that's referrals. And that's the best thing to do. They'll also, when they get results, be more likely to stick around and buy something else from you. So one signature offer, my personal favorite is however, a one-to-many group model, whether that's a group coaching program or a course, you obviously, it's not rocket science. When I'm on a call with 75 clients inside of our empower program, that's one hour of my time that I'm serving 75 people. That means I'm impacting 75 lives, probably more because, you know, they go up in their, they show up in their life and their business and help more people, but 75 lives and also do the math. That's literally 75 times whatever I charged that I'm making now in one hour, right? So the group model not only is great for leveraging your time and leveraging the amount of money that you can make and the amount of impact that you can make, but it's also a great way to leverage your skill set. It's more testimonials. It's more feedback. It's more opportunity for understanding exactly what it is that you're building. You get more data. And then the last thing that I would say is just also make sure when you're in that beginning stage up to 5k month, make sure you're building your email list, right? Because social media is awesome and it's free marketing, but it is a borrowed platform. So if Zucks shuts it all down tomorrow, or you get hacked or something happens with your social media, how are you going to connect back with your audience and community? Make sure you are building an email list from day one. If I could go back, that's one of those things that I would say, I wish I had started it sooner because the email list would be a lot bigger and people love to buy from email lists and email is a great way to connect with your people. So if you're shooting for that, you know, 5k con consistent month, we're showing up every day. We know exactly who we help and how we help them and who we serve and what solutions we offer to the problems. We're putting out one signature offer and we're just using and selling that offer on repeat where we're finding it, we're honing it in, and we're making sure that we're building our email list. Awesome. Okay. Now you've got that on lock. You're moving up. You've now you're hitting 10 K months, 12 K months, and you're shooting for those 20 K months. So what would I do if I were focusing on 20 K months? Well, the game, the game is a little different now, right? The name of the game at this point, call it, you know, 15 K to 30 K months 
is refinement. I know I just said it before, but refinement. So now you have brand awareness, you have clout, you have credibility, you have testimonials, you have authority, you have trust. You're likely known in the industry to an extent. So now what we have is a proven strategy. You have a proven offer. You've got clients that are paying you and those clients are getting results. And this creates momentum like a snowball. So we want to use the momentum that you have, and we want to double down on refining so that we don't just keep pouring water into a bucket with a hole in the bottom. Okay. No leaky holes. So during the refinement phase, it's going to require you to step back from a second for a second from the business. I did not say take a break. Um, you of course can take a vacation, right? But like, you're going to step back from so much of the, in the business that I need you to work on the business. So the, in the business is the doing, it's the content, it's the DMS, it's the showing up, it's the lives, it's the podcast, it's the hosting, the coaching calls, but working on the business is going to be the refinement of where do you need to clean up leaky holes? Are things falling through the cracks with your client onboarding system? Is there something broken in the offboarding system? Do you even have an offboarding system? Are you still manually doing things like asking for testimonials? How can you automate that stuff? Where can we tighten up your boundaries? Where can we tighten up your finances? Is money going out that you didn't even realize was going out? Are you paying for platforms that you weren't even using anymore? So really refining everything and beginning the process of streamlining things as well as automating and or delegating things so that it's not all manually you. All right. So number one is refinement. The second thing that I would focus on when we're shooting for those, you know, 15 to 30 K months is I want you to start to create opportunities for your clients to stay with you. So it's awesome to make a sale, but if you're always working off of constantly having to make a new sale, that means you're constantly having to look for new leads or attract new leads, which requires more effort, energy, time. So how can you get a buyer to stay with you? Because once a buyer is easier to be a buyer again, so long as they have a good experience, that would be the LTV, the lifetime customer value. So if someone comes through your signature offer, doesn't matter, high ticket, low ticket, if they come through and they have a good experience, then what's next? Is there an opportunity for them to continue with you? Is there some sort of a upsell? Is there a downsell? Is there a little email funnel? Don't be scared of the word funnel. It's just a little, you know, couple emails that go out to sell them. Maybe there's a membership they can join, a continuation program they can join. Maybe you sell templates on the back end that are going to be helpful for their business or um, systems that can be helpful for their business. Maybe you're just even an affiliate for another platform or program that you now are then having them enroll in. So how do you create opportunities for people to stay in your world and increase their lifetime customer value? Okay. Number three, we're going to take your content up a notch or like five. I really want you at this point, you've been testing, you've been playing, you got to those 5k, 10k months. And now it's like really standing firm, flag in the sand. Who are you? What is your unique brand? Let's really hone in on the messaging. Let's really start refining and getting more clear on who exactly we're calling in. Not just the low hanging fruit, but like, who do we actually want to be calling in and really starting to position yourself to stand out. Now you don't have to do something crazy or wild to stand out. You just have to be yourself. And that honestly is the hardest thing for a lot of us, but how can you be a little bit more shoulders back, chin up. This is who I am. This is who I serve. This is who I don't serve, right? Like this is what you get when you come into my world. And then the last thing in this particular arena, you know, 15 to 30 K months is really making sure that you're plugged into mentors and communities. Because in my experience, this 15 to 30 ish K month range is pretty head down. Like it's pretty, you're like in the business and on the business. You're likely just getting to a place where you're starting to delegate and automate. You're pretty busy. Call it the hustle, call it the grind. The work ethic is there clearly. And that's why you're being rewarded for the value that you're putting out. You're getting the value back, but it also can feel really isolating and it can feel very lonely and it can feel, um, confusing and you can feel when you're going through wobbles and challenges, like you're something's wrong with you or the business is broken or it's going to break. So staying plugged in is really important. Okay. From there, we're going to then move into now we're talking 50 K months. So you can call it 40, you can call it 60, but that like sexy 50 K month, you're bringing in half a million dollars a year. What do we need to do at this point? So some of the actions that are required at this level are really tough for a lot of us, especially as entrepreneurs who like to be in control. But the first thing is let go. Now I'm not going to sing. I really want to, but I won't let go. 
let go of offers, let go of processes, let go of clients, let go of team, anything that is not serving you, let it go, cut it off. It is not serving you. You do not need it. And this could even be your own habits. This can be your own mindset. This could be your own thoughts. If they are not serving you, let them go. Friendships. I'm not saying cut friends off and you know, you're better than them and you have to like disassociate, but if it is not serving you, there is not space for it. If there are accounts that you follow that do not make you feel good, let them go, mute them or unfollow them. Now, sidebar conversation that we can have, of course, is like, oh, is that an avoidance technique? Shouldn't you face your demons? If something's triggering you, shouldn't you look at it, work on your shadows? Yes. And also, right? Like we also need to know our own capacity and our own boundaries And with social media, we often forget that we are the curators of the feed that we see. Based on everything that you do, your actions that you take, what you like, who you follow, uh, what you comment on, what you save, what you share, the algorithm will show you more of that type of content. So if you're seeing things that are not expanding you, that are not serving you, that are not calling you up to your highest self or giving you really great ideas or fueling your creativity then mute them or unfollow them. And we can also work on the shadows in the back end, right? Like you can do that too. But this is the time now to say no. So likely 5K, 10K, even 20K months, you probably said yes to everything. That's kind of what you do need to do. Yes to all the opportunities. Of course, I'll coach in your program for free. Yes, I'd like to speak on that stage. Yes, I'll, I'll write an article. And as you're approaching the 40, 50, 60, 70K mark, now you need to start saying no. You need to put your blinders back on. You need to make sure that you are focused on you. You might want to change your pricing structure around. You might want to create more distance between how accessible you are to your clients, meaning maybe now you have a couple offers in your product suite and for people to work with you, not even one-on-one, but like for them to be able to work with you at all, maybe that's a higher product that's further along in your suite. It's a little bit more of an investment. It's a little bit more of a time and financial investment, but maybe you're not super accessible just to everybody. Same thing with like coaching people for free in the DMs. I mean, years ago, I totally did that. I didn't even get mad. I wasn't triggered when people like, oh, okay, pick your brain. Like, yeah, totally pick my brain. It's great. It's good practice for me. There was a lot of yeses at the beginning of the business, but when I started to really scale into those 50K plus months, it was a lot of no's. You know, unfortunately, I can't do that right now. Here's a great program that you can you can join. Unfortunately, you know, I, it's, that wouldn't be fair to my clients. I don't have the capacity for that right now. We could discuss a way to work together if, if that's something you're interested in, right? Okay, the second thing when you're at this point is now hiring a, and outsourcing is pretty, um, it's not mandatory, it's not necessary, but like it's it's on the table. It's on the table. If you want to be an entrepreneur with a team, right? There's a difference between being a solopreneur and being an entrepreneur. And that's something that you need to get super clear with. You can absolutely be hitting 50K months solo. Like you could totally do it without a team. Um, I did. I was completely solo when I was at 50K months, even a little bit more than that. I was totally solo. And it, again, felt a little lonely. I was wearing all the hats. I was kind of burnt out. I was doing a lot of things because at this point, the business becomes more complex, more offers, more clients, more platforms, so on and so forth. So what I would do is I would consider hiring and outsourcing so that you can really stay in your zone of genius. This is not just so that you don't have to do things that you don't want to do, but this is actually where leadership comes into play. Can you bring people in that are actually better than you in other areas of the business? Where my team is in the company, they are better at the things that they do than I am. That is why I'm not in that seat. And that's a good thing, right? That's what you want as a business owner. So that's a leadership thing that you get to work on. It's tough. It's an ego thing, but um, I want them to be better at those things than I am. And then I get to stay within my zone of genius. And of course there's extenuating circumstances, right? Number three for those big 50K months is I, I want you to start focusing on some other offers that can support your signature offer. So at this point, you likely have a few different things Our business still very much runs bread and butter off of our signature offer, but we also have an elite mastermind, which is a high ticket thing. We have some six month mentorship containers. We also have a bunch of smaller self-study programs and courses that people can buy by themselves, which over the years we've turned funnels on, right? So there's like different opt-ins that go to email funnels that sell those people, those things. Now we have our membership, which is our lowest ticket item investment that you can come into. So at this point, at that 50K mark, you're going to want to start to bring in other offers. It could be monthly recurring revenue. So something like a subscription model or a membership model where there's monthly payments, 
Or it could be a longer container, like a mentorship or mastermind, maybe that you're doing some heavy coaching in. It could be totally low ticket, you know, self-study courses, but it's really just thinking about the customer journey, where they're starting in their journey, where they're ending in their journey. And then you go in between, if I'm drawing a linear, like a line right to left, where they start on the left, where they end on the right. Now I want you to plug in kind of like a timeline, like where are your different offers? Start with your signature offer first. Where does that fall in their journey? Is that towards the beginning of their journey, that transformation in that signature offer? Is it towards the end? Is it in the middle? And then price-wise, where does it fall? And then wherever it falls, so our signature program is actually further along on the journey. It's closer to the end and it's higher ticket. So it's like, okay, cool. Well then let me maybe create something that comes before that particular transformation. So then I get to think about what would they need to happen? What win or transformation do they need before they come into that offer and maybe at a lower price point and start to kind of fill the gaps in to bring your product suite to life. And the last thing I would say at the 50K month mark is less is more. I know it could feel kind of crazy because it might feel like 50K a month, I should be doing all these things. This person has a podcast there on YouTube. I need to be on Pinterest. I should be on this thing. I should build that thing. But at this time, less is actually more. So really making sure that you're focusing on one platform, you've refined your one signature offer. This is going to help you scale faster. The way that I see it, I'm going to give you a visual. Building your business is like a singular building. So imagine we're like building vertically, we're going up. So we're going to build the Empire State Building straight up. Once we've built it straight up, we're going to spend time going back through it and we're going to refine it and we're going to make sure there are no cracks. It can't fall. The foundation is strong. Once we have the system of how we've built the Empire State Building, we're then going to go to the block next door and we're going to build another building using that same framework. It might be a shorter building, smaller ticket, lower product, right? But now we're going to build another building next to it horizontally. And we're going to keep doing that next to it. So over time, building your business is vertical, scaling your business is horizontal. And at the end of the day, when you're scaling it, you likely will need help from other people and team members and processes. And that's how you end up with a skyline. <laughs> now I'm no architect, but you know what I mean? All right. And then lastly, we're getting to the sexy, arbitrary, everybody loves it number, the 100K month. Okay. That is a million dollar year. It's over a million dollar year. Um, it's totally doable. It's doable for the everyday person, but it does require work. All right. So I'm not your coach to tell you, you can sit on the beach and drink cocktails and make hundred K a month without doing work. It definitely requires work. I know I've been there. I've done it many times. All right. Here's the deal. At this point, you're pouring gasoline on the fire to what is working. So we've built the building. We've built a couple other buildings around it. So we started to scale and now we're really focusing on what the scaling looks like. I personally don't know that, I don't know what it would look like to fully sustain a seven figure a year business without having any team members. Um, for me, when we hit that, when we were hitting the seven figure mark, when we, our first seven figure year, I had Lauren, who at the time was my assistant. She's now our integrator, which is like a COO. And that was it. It was Lauren and I. Um, however, I also did have a couple coaches. So I had a couple coaches helping me inside of Empower, our signature program. And then I had Lauren come in as my assistant. That was my first million dollar year um, many years back. I don't know that I could have done it alone. I really don't. I, I think people do it. I'm not really sure how, but at that point, there's just a lot. There's a lot. So you don't have to have a big team, but like maybe there's an assistant, maybe there's a VA, maybe you have a couple coaches helping you inside of your coaching programs. Cause at the end of the day, the client experience is the most important thing, right? So you might also want to start to broaden your marketing efforts. Now we did 3 million in revenue before we ever started playing with ads or bringing in affiliates. But when we got to a place in the business where we said, okay, cool. Like it's time to pour gasoline on the fire. We know that the systems work. We know that the, the X, Y, Z is proven. We know that this converts. And so now it was like, let's play with it. So we put on our scientist lab coat and our goggles as we always do. And we became little scientists in the business. And we started, this was about three years ago. Um, we started playing around with ads and we're like, okay, what does that look like? And then we started playing with affiliates and then we started playing with other platforms and we got on YouTube and we created the podcast. And so again, the idea of scaling horizontally because everything was foundationally set up at this point, 
you can really start to pour gasoline on the fire and sort of widen yourself horizontally. Um, I believe at the 100K month mark, it's also a really great time to really take a look at your monthly recurring revenue. So if you don't already have some sort of a subscription or a membership model, you might want to bring that in. Um, we didn't for years later, but we had we had a back end recurring revenue that was happening. So we had continuous continuation programs off of our Empower Signature program, where there was almost like a back end membership where that monthly revenue was coming in or extended payment plans. We've been running our Elite Mastermind for four years now. So those gals, a lot of them are on monthly payment plans and that's spread across the whole year. So when someone joins in December for the following year or January for the year that we're going into, that's 12 months of payments that are gonna be coming in. It's more rare at that high ticket level that people are paying us in full. So most of our gals are paying on a monthly payment. And when you have five, 10, 15, 20, 30 people paying you on a monthly payment, especially when it's a higher ticket, that's really juicy monthly recurring revenue. Okay. And then the last thing for the 100K month is at this point, you're likely further away from where your client is. So a lot of us teach what we've been through. A lot of us have gone through transformations, whether that's weight loss, fertility, learning how to play guitar, building a business. And then we want to help people, right? Because it's like, we've been through this thing. It changed our life. We want to help other people do it. When you get to a place in your business, and this has nothing to do with the revenue, you don't have to be a business coach to resonate with this. But when you get to a place where you're now doing those 100K months, you're doing that seven figure year, the journey and the gap has probably gotten really big. So where you started or where your client is versus where you are at this point has probably gotten really wide. So you want to remember that it's really important for you to continuously share your, your come up, your story, your hero's journey of like where you started, where you came from, really remember what you went through and where your clients might be. You also might want to be showcasing more of your clients to your clients so that they can really see themselves in other people. And it's kind of like the trainer who has a perfect eight pack versus the trainer who maybe doesn't even have a four pack, but is really knowledgeable. Sometimes the one with the eight pack who's perfectly chiseled out of stone is less approachable, right? And so whether this is fitness, guitar, or business, it doesn't matter you want to make sure that you're really showing people where you're currently at and still following the come with me as opposed to just the look at me. Because when we get this far along in our business, sometimes it can feel just very look at me. And that could be of the opposite of a benefit. That could be a disservice to the client and to the audience, right? At the end of the day, Obviously, all of the months, it doesn't matter where you're at or what you're trying to hit. It's consistency, it's repetition, it's work ethic, it's relationships, it's time. And what I would say with building a business, which I say about everything, right? It's like, it's it's actually simple, but it's not easy. It's quite simple, but it's not always easy. So I really want you to zoom out and focus less on the revenue number and that goal and I'd be very cautious of chasing that. Like I'm all for when I have a client who is like dead set on hitting a 10K month, I'm like, let's do it. Let's go for it. I can't wait to get you there. But, and also I will speak from experience myself and then working with thousands of people, it like nothing changes. It's not like the ultimate, you don't wake up all of a sudden like levitating. Um, it certainly can help, especially if you're in a financial strain, it certainly can help for so many reasons. But I will tell you the 20K, the 50K, the 100K, We've done multiple six figure months and nothing changes. Like it, it, it just amplifies more of whatever's there. And when people say new levels, new devils, what that oftentimes is referring to is like, okay, cool. So with those bigger cash months, right? Multiple six figure months also for us comes more overhead. And so now we do, we have a team and we have affiliates and we'll do ads. And so it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. You're making more money, but you're also spending more money and we use more platforms. And this is where it's like, you don't want to blindly follow other people's goals and you don't want to blindly follow arbitrary numbers. But you really need to check in with yourself. Like, do you want these things? And again, I'm all for it. Like, even if it's just a one and done, like you just, you want to hit the 50 K month, you do it. You're like, okay, wow, that actually isn't for me. I, I don't care to do that again. Or you get into a continuously chasing it mode or worse, um, I experienced this and I know a lot of my friends and peers have as well. My business doubled the revenue year over year for, I don't know, four or five years in a row. And at a point, I mean, do the math. It's like, oh my gosh, like if you're, it's the compound effect. It's like, okay, cool. 
So if you're doubling the revenue every year, you do 50K and then you do 100K and then you do 200K and then it's 400K and then it's 800K and then it's 1.6 million and then it's, you know, 3.2 million. And it's like at a point, like when does it stop? And I'm not saying it has to stop because we're going to the moon, but at the same time, at what cost? Right. And I have been having conversations behind the scenes with clients where we've plateaued our revenue or even gone backwards in our revenue the last year or so intentionally because of the way that I want my life to look. And so always ask yourself, what do you want your life to look like, right? Because you should be building your business around your life, not your life around your business. And I have made that mistake many times or chasing something, right? In hopes that it will fulfill something else within me. I hope this episode was helpful. It's definitely lays it all out there for you. And there's a lot of nuanced things that you're going to have to do and people, persons, and excuse me, uh, ways that you're going to have to be and become But ultimately, you dream it, you build it, you optimize, and then you scale it, right? It is absolutely possible. I'm curious if this episode was helpful or if it got you thinking. I would love to hear from you. Shoot me a DM. I am Jessica DeRose. Let me know maybe what season or phase you're in, what your current goal is. Um, And I'd just love to hear if if it was a helpful episode. And that's all. Cheers to Revolution. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, I invite you to be a part of our ripple effect and share it with a friend. And please, if you feel called, take 30 seconds to leave a five-star review and I'll be forever grateful. Until next time, cheers to your evolution.